Hey what's up everyone and welcome back to a new video here on the channel. In today's video we're taking a look at how we can use the SEMrush platform to do an SEO audit for us. So if you are running a website or if you're just running a company and you have a website and you want to find out what issues can I fix on my website and what are the issues and where are those issues then running an SEO audit with a tool such as SEMrush is super helpful to find those issues and kind of make it just easier for you to actually know uh, what those issues are and how you can solve them because SEMrush actually gives you a lot of advice and tips on how to solve each issue uh, depending on what issue is affecting your site. Uh, so with that being said, let's just jump into the tutorial itself and let's just dive into the SEMrush platform. So the very first thing you want to do is just make sure you sign up for a SEMrush account. I'll leave the link in the video description where you can get, I think it's a 14 day free trial uh, because this is also a video which is in partnership with SEMrush as well. So if you click the link in the video description, you will get an additional 14 day free trial. I think the normal one is seven days. I'm not 100% sure if that's correct, but I think that's the way it works. Uh, but once you signed up for SEMrush, what we want to make sure we do is just head over to the site audit section, which you'll find here on the left side. And once you're in this section, you will see your ongoing projects right here, which I will have to blur out because this is for some of my clients. Uh, but once you are in this section, all you have to do is just click on create a project. Once you click create a project, all you do is just paste in your domain here. And then you can also put a project name if you want to just remember what project you're working on. And just to make this easy for us, what I've done is I've just copied a random URL. I searched for a coffee shop in New York, which is the most all, or most common example I use here on the channel. Uh, so I just copied in their URL. Uh, directly from Google. I'm not affiliated with this company, but let's just go ahead and see what's, what problems they have on this specific website. Uh, I'll just name this coffee shop uh, New York. And once that's set up, we can just go ahead and click on create project. Once we click create a project, we will have some additional settings that we can set up for this audit as well. Uh, so we have the site audit settings, which we can limit the amount of checked pages. So if you are if you have a massive website, usually it's e-commerce websites, which you will have thousands upon thousands of pages. Uh, in this case, I can imagine that they won't, uh, they will have more than let's say hundred URLs. So I'm just going to limit, limit it to a hundred. Uh, but obviously you can kind of set this according to how many pages you have. And the best way to kind of figure out how many pages you have, if you're, if you're not exactly sure on the exact number is to just go into your Google search console and check the URLs index there. Once we're finalized with this stage, we're just going to go to the crawl source. So we can either do it through the website itself. We can do the sitemaps on the site. We can enter the sitemap URL or URLs from a file. So basically what this is, if you're using website, the what or the SEMrush crawler will go on, go onto the website and find as many URLs as possible. But in some cases, if you're not linking to a specific URL and it's not linked anywhere on the website, SEMrush will have a hard time finding those URLs. So in some cases, you might be wondering, okay, why is not all my URLs showing up? In those cases, you can also link to your sitemap on the site. So you just link directly to your sitemap. And that way, if all your URLs are within the sitemap, then they will be captured that way. Otherwise, you can also enter the sitemap URL, which is basically the same thing. And the final option is to enter URLs from a file. So if you have an Excel file, you can just rank or add all your URLs to the website in an Excel file, and then you can just upload it to SEMrush. And that way, SEMrush will only crawl the URLs that you have entered. And that is a good way to kind of specify if you're just doing an audit for a specific section of your website, or if you're just looking at uh, some specific pages, that is going to be the best way to do it. Uh, in this case, we're just going to go with the whole website as a whole. And then final thing down here at the bottom, send an email uh, every time the audit is complete. We're not going to do that. Uh, we're just going to go to the second section here on the right or on the left crawler settings. Uh, so here we can use or pick the user agent that we want to use for this audit. Now, this is a bit more technical. And if you're just running a general uh, audit on your website, you won't have any issues here. Uh, but in some cases, if you're working for a larger company, they might be blocking certain user agents in the robust TXT. And in that case, you will have to make sure that this uh, user agent is allowed to crawl the website. But if you don't really have, if you haven't really done anything to your robust.txt, most user agents will be allowed. So you won't run into any issues here. Uh, but what you can do is pick if you want it for, to do from a mobile perspective or a desktop perspective. That's 
the most important part to remember here if you're just starting out with your SEO audit for the first time and if you're not doing anything too complicated. Uh, I'm just going to go with the mobile perspective because Google is uh, taking mobile uh, like first uh, first hand account uh, so we're just going to go with a mobile version then crawl delay you can have delays here as well just to limit if you have a DNS who who will restrict certain uh, crawlers from loading the website too much uh, to like minim minimize the impact on the server performance uh, we're not going to do anything here anything specific so we're just going to leave this as it is and we're just going to go to allow and disallow urls again here you can do a bit more advanced you can disallow and allow certain urls uh, from being allowed within the crawl itself but we're not going to touch anything here so we're just going to go to the next step so remove url parameters here you can also remove parameters which again goes a bit more to the more advanced steps and I, I really don't think anyone uh, watching this video is actually going to look at this uh, so what I would do is just ignore this part for now and um, we have bypass website restrictions so here you can kind of bypass uh, certain restrictions that you have within the robust txt for example um, in most cases it will still be blocked if you're working for a bigger company because they will also block it in the dns uh, but yeah this is something you can do here as well and try to see if that actually solves your problem finally we can schedule this so we can do this crawl we can do it every week uh, or we can do it daily and we can just do it once and um, doing it weekly is a good idea because uh, usually you you want to see the improvements that you're making so once the crawl is done again automatically without you actually doing it you can see the improvements week by week uh, or you can just do it daily so you'll see your daily improvements or you can just do it once keep in mind that you have a crawl limit with your uh, subscription plan with SEMrush as well so th the more often you do your um, your crawls on the website or your audits and uh, the more of that crawl budget will be used so what I would recommend you to do is probably do it weekly don't do it daily unless you're running like a massive company and you have the right plan to, to do so uh, under your SEMrush account uh, but with that being said let's just do it once for this website because it's not even my website so once that is all set up and done we can just go ahead and click start site audit and now we'll start crawling the website and in a few minutes we'll have the data right in front of us okay great so the crawl is done uh, this is not a massive website because it's just a local coffee shop in new york so that's kind of just what i imagined they have six pages on their website if Everything is linked together directly on the website, not taking into account the sitemap or anything. Uh, site health is 83. They have two errors on the website, 12 warnings. The crawlability is 100%. They have some HTTPS errors in here as well. They have some site performance, which is at 97%, and internal linking at 97% as well. Now, to go into this audit, all we have to do is just click uh, on the name of the project, which you picked once we are in here we have the quick overview of every all the issues and everything that's going on with the website in terms of seo in general so we'll have the overview of the site health this is just a samrush a way of calculating your overall site health it's not something that google looks at but it kind of gives you an overview and a, or an idea of where your website performance is at um, you can also see the top 10 percent of websites over here so this is top 10 percent of websites on SEMrush in general and then you can also see it by category under here so uh, let's see if coffee shops are in here I wouldn't think so but perhaps something similar not necessarily but this will kind of give you an idea of where you are in terms of your competitors anyways looking down here we have crawled pages so we have two healthy pages we have zero broken pages we have two pages with issues and we have two redirects on the website and then top issues will be down here now you can see the certificate register to incorrect name i'm not entirely sure what that is i've never seen that issue before so what we can actually do is just go to why and how to fix it right here and let's see what's going on contact your website administrator and ask them to install the correct certificate so okay it's about the ssl certificate so maybe this website doesn't have an ssl certificate which i think they do uh, but let me just double check real quick we're just going to open it up no so they don't have an ssl on this website so that is obviously a big issue which we would want to solve um 
And for this company in general, uh, the SSL is usually part of your hosting plan with whatever hosting provider you have. If you're on WordPress, usually it comes with SSL. I think even GoDaddy gives you free SSL nowadays. Um, Wix, you will have it automatically as well. So this is not a common issue that you'll see, uh, but it's still an issue that a lot of websites actually have. Uh, but going back, we have missing meta description on two pages. We have missing H1 on two pages. We have no SNI support and we have two large JavaScript and CSS total, uh, which is most likely just going to be part of the template that the company is using uh, because I don't think this, this is a custom made website. It looks like a fairly common template from somewhere. Um, Going in from here, we have our crawlability, which as you can see is already at 100%, but we can go here at the top and see our overall issues, crawl pages, statistics, and so forth. Uh, so if we just jump over to issues right here, we'll have the full list of the issues that we have. Uh, so we have the first, the SSL issue right here, as you can see. So we will just have to update our SSL certificate in order to fix this issue. And then we have AMP related issues, which is not that common anymore. And I don't see that much unless it's like a newspaper um, or yeah, newspaper or publication. They usually go with AMP pages, uh, but I don't imagine that they have any AMP pages on this website anyway. Uh, but most uh, important here is that you can see all your is, uh, issues listed here. And usually if you have more than, I think they had six pages on this website, you will actually have your issues right here and you can see each individual issue and where it's affecting on your website so if you go over to warnings instead of all so you can see errors here there's going to be the most important issues to fix and then if you keep scrolling down you'll have warnings but instead of scrolling down you can just use the buttons here at the top to make it a bit easier so as you can see we have two pages they don't have an h1 heading so an h1 heading is going to be how you follow the html structure of your titles and also helps Google understand the structure of your general uh, page as well. Uh, so if you wanted to see what pages are missing in H1, we would just go ahead and click on this here and then we can see, okay, our home page is missing the H1. And we can also see that we have two different home pages because this is seen as a home page and this is seen as a home page, probably because there's no redirect between these two pages. So actually to Google, there's two home pages on this website. Um, because this one with the slash at the end is seen as one URL and the one without the slash is seen as another URL. And this means that we have two duplicate pages basically. So if we go to this one, it will open up a separate page because it's not redirecting back to the other one. And let's just, yes, this page is safe. Uh, hopefully this one will be seen as a different page in general and there's no h1 on this one so then we can just go ahead and update that and then that issue would be fixed now if we go back again to the results we have two pages which are missing meta descriptions i'm gonna imagine it's gonna be the same ones yes it is you can kind of see it's gonna be the same pages for all of these issues uh, so going back to issues here again we have two pages with low is a text to HTML ratio and so forth. Um, so this is kind of the basics of using the, the SEO audit or the audit tool, site audit tool in SEMrush. Uh, there's not really that much else to it. We have some other additional things up here as well, but what you're gonna be using majority of the time is just gonna going, uh, go into the general issues and finding out, okay, where are these issues located and how can I fix them? So it's very convenient that SEMrush is fairly user-friendly or is very user-friendly, especially if you're just getting started with SEO or if you're just running a company and you don't, can't really bother to get into it. Uh, you have all the information you need here about each individual issue. So you can just click why and how to fix it. And then they will give an, give an explanation about the issue itself and then how you can fix this issue for your specific website. So this gives you everything you need. But if you want to keep going, you also have crawled pages over here. So you can see the entire list of the pages which the SEMrush crawler managed to find on the website. So as you can see here, we have the homepage, the homepage, another version of the homepage. We have three different versions of the homepage. Then we have the robots.txt, uh, another version of the robots.txt, and we have the site map. So this website in general, um doesn't actually have any other pages it seems weird okay so gift card is linking to another website menu i guess it's just linking to a pdf or something or it's not even working yeah, it's odd that, that summers didn't even find the menu section um but as you can see right here you will find where you have all the urls which 
SEMrush managed to found. Then you also have the site structure in general, uh, which in this case is not going to give us a lot of details, but will kind of give you an idea of the overall general site structure of your website. In this case, it's a bit hard to tell uh, given that they don't have that many pages. So it's maybe not the best example, uh, but just go in here if you're interested in your overall uh, view of your site structure and how everything is mapped together. Uh, jumping over to statistics is not going to give us too much information, which is going to be useful here, uh, where you will have your general crawl depth, so how deep your website usually goes. Um, so you kind of want to make sure that uh, both users and search engines can find your pages as easy as possible. So you, you shouldn't have too many pages to click through in order to get to a specific page. Uh, so that's kind of what that is telling you. Uh, you have your markups here, here as well, but I don't think this... Uh, website is using any schema at all uh, you have http status code uh, and we have some redirects in here 33 uh, percent of the pages are redirects uh, which is uh, not that good but given that this website doesn't have that many pages it kind of makes sense uh, canonicalization uh, making sure that you have rel uh, rel canonical uh, towards your Pages, so Google know which version of the pages is the correct one not necessarily that important for this specific website uh, you have AMP, um, not going to be super relevant for most of you, uh, sitemap and crawl pages and so forth. So you have all, I basically have all your information right here directly in the crawler. Um, compare crawls, so if you've done any previous crawls, you can kind of compare the results in general. Uh, this is going to be more important if you're doing your weekly or your daily crawls, so you can kind of see the improvements that you're making to the website. And that's what you're going to have here on the progress as well. So even though you haven't set it up to do um, the crawls automatically, you can actually do it manually. So if I wanted to, I could rerun uh, the campaign up here in the corner and that would actually rerun the crawl and I can get an update in terms of the total issues I have on the website. And then you also have the final one, which is going to be your JavaScript impact on the overall website. This one, you will have to upgrade to the Guru plan, which I don't have on my current account. Uh, but this is also going to be a bit more in depth and it doesn't really going to be a big issue for a majority of you watching this video. That is the basics of using the site audit. Hopefully you found this video useful. And let me go back to my full screen camera so you can see me all again. Um, Hopefully you found the video useful. If you have any questions about using the SEMrush audit tool, make sure to leave them in the comments. I'm happy to help out. And if you want to work with me on your SEO project, if you want to hire me, make sure to check out the link in the video description. There will be a link somewhere where you can send me an email and we can book up a meeting and discuss your project as well. That is going to be it for today's video and I'll see you guys in the next video here on the channel.